Hi, Fiona Smith here. I'm going to take you through the new dairy based budgeting feature within Dairy Base. Uh, we're hoping this will enable you to forward plan for the year ahead so that you can look at some changes in your milk price and input prices and see the impact that that's going to have on your business. Uh, once you've registered for Dairy Base and got some data sets in there, you can log in and select Create Budget up the top. That will pop up and let you select any of your historical data sets to create a budget from. Uh, some people will choose to do that from the most recent financial year, which might be the most similar year to where you're going. Uh, but you can also choose to select any of your other historical years. So you might decide that you're doing a budget for the 21-22 year and you think that seasonally it's really similar to 16-17. So you can actually go and select the 16-17 year and use the physical information from that data set to create your budget for the coming year. So once you're in the budget, you can select any of the data sets that are actual years of data. So I can select on that. You go into the budget year and nominate the financial year that the budget will correspond to. So I'll select 21-22. You've got the ability to put any name on the budget. So I'll just put budget $6.50 because I'm working on the assumption that for that year ahead, we'll be looking at a $6.50 per kilo milk solid milk price. You can put a description in here if you need notes uh, to remind you what the budget is about as you work through it. Uh, so budget $6.50 with high input prices is what I'll look at today. So let's create budget down the bottom. And that will take you into the screen where the budget will pop up for you. Depending on your internet connection, this might be really slow or it might be really fast. Launch the budget editor and it brings you into the milk income screen. You'll notice on each of the screens this source data. That's referring to the information that you've actually got in your historical data set. So it goes back to the financial data from that information. And then all of these white boxes are the areas you can change. And within each screen, you'll note that you can change it in multiple ways. So you can change the dollar value per kilo milk solids or cents per litre, uh, depending on how you get paid and you view that information. And you can go in and change any of those. So if I look at milk price, I said I'm going to do $6.50, which you note will change the other information as we move through. And up here, is the banner output on the key piece of information for each of those tags. This has a toggle, so you can look at per kilo milk solids or you can go to cents per litre so that you can review the information that's most beneficial to you. You then come into within each of the screens. So on the livestock screen, you can change the sales and the purchases. I'll just change that quickly. As we move through, you can tab between each of those screens and it will show you the result. Once again, up the top, it's given you the livestock trading profit as a result of those changes. When you come into the fertilizer, you'll note uh, that it tells you how much it was per tonne applied. So for the historical year, you can see what the price was um, based on the amount of fertilizer applied for that particular year. So I'm gonna say that for this particular year, that fertiliser prices are going to increase relatively substantially. So going up to 50,000, which would say we're looking at $714 a tonne for that particular year. To move through into the water screen. So it's about changing the milk price that you'll have for the year and then some really key input prices to see the impact that will have on your business. So a water purchase, I'm going to say that I'll purchase 20,000 worth of uh, water and that my actual costs for irrigation, which are all your pumping costs um, and any of the, the actual fees for irrigation are gonna increase as well. And you'll note over here, it tells you how much that cost is gonna be per megalitre of water applied for that particular year. Uh, so just need to keep in mind, 
the, the year ahead, whether the water applied is going to be similar to what you had in that particular historical year that you've selected. In the feed tab, you've got a few options in the way you entered the data and the way the information comes through from your historical data set. So you'll see here, there's a finance detail and a physical detail. This finance detail is based on the variable costs that you entered in your historical data set divided by the actual tonnes of each feed type in that year. Whereas the physical detail is based on the individual feed information in the physical tab from your historical data set multiplied by the purchase price that you entered for each of the feeds. When you complete a budget, it's preferable that these are really closely aligned um, because otherwise it means that you haven't uh, aligned the actual cost uh, for your feed in that year against the actual quantity purchased. So it's better if these are as closely aligned as possible. Then what you can do, you can actually, there's two options in the feed screen. So you can alert to untick this box, which will let you change the total amount for each of the feed types. So for fodder purchase, I said in my notes, I was doing a high input cost. So I'll change that up to reflect the change um, from $200 per dry tonne up to $300 on fodder. I'll say that the concentrates purchased is going to go up to $150,000. So that puts me at an average of $455. Um, and you'll see here with the other feed purchase that based on the quantity, that's not coming through on the physical data down here. So I can change all the information here or I can tick this box and I can actually work through and change the per tonne price on each of these feeds. So I'll say barley goes to 350, uh, canola meal comes up to 480. So I'll just change each of these. And you'll note that the percentage change is changing as I work through that. And then that information will then flow through to the end of the budget. And you'll notice up here once again that we've got the feedback on each of those feeds. So for the concentrate and fodder on what the per ton price will be as a result of those budget changes. In each of the screens, there are, there's help information within each of them. So you'll actually get some more feedback about the data that you can change there and how you can work through that process of um, putting together the budget information. Then you come through to the summary, which will give the feedback of all the changes that you've made. So it'll change, show your change in farm cash income. It works through each of those expense types and it will then give you the change in total farm working expense. So uh, the cash variable and overhead costs and the change that you get as a result of that. And then it will give you your farm operating cash surplus. So essentially the end position of the budget, it will show you what the cash will be at the end of the budget once you've made those changes. You can actually come straight through to the summary tab when you're doing a budget and make all the changes within this tab. So if you don't want to work through each of the individual ones, you can actually just come in here and either change the dollar value or do an, a percentage change for that particular item so that you can see the impact. Once you've made all of those changes, you click on save and calculate. And it will bring you through to show you the actual summary of those results. So it's very similar to the previous screen, gives you an overall summary up here. It shows you what the farm operating cash surplus will be. You can do the same change here. So you can go from dollars per kilo milk solids to cents per litre, and it will make that change throughout the summary so that you can see the impact of all of those changes. Down the right hand side here, you've got the ability to ed edit the budget. You can create a copy of the budget. So if you've made all those changes and then you suddenly think, actually, I'd like to see how it looks at $7, then you can make that change and see what the impact will be. Uh, you can also load the data set as a full data set so that you can have a look at all the information rather than just the budget 
cart and you can load reports. And when you select load reports, it gives you the full selection that you would normally have of the dairy-based reports. So for example, if I go in and look at the comparison report, you'll note up here that it's pre-filled the historical year that I've used and the budget year that I've just created. You can select set report filters, um, make sure these filters uh, correspond to the way you would normally look at the data when you're comparing to the benchmarks. Click on generate report. And once again, that might take a bit of time. And then you'll note that you can get a full set of dairy-based reports, the same as what you would be used to looking at. And you can look at the historical data lined up against the budget. And you can see the impact that that will have on all components of the business. So you can see it from a cash perspective, a profit perspective, and then a wealth perspective. Um, so the budgeting will allow, enable you to do that. There are also a couple of other ways that you can create a budget from the outset. So when I started off, we talked about coming up to this create budget button. You can actually, when you're within a data set, use this button here, which is another way to create a budget. A budget. Or if you actually load that budget, you can also use this arrow over here where it says manage budgets and that will also enable you to set a budget for that particular historical year. You'll know when you look at your actual data set list that any budget years are indented below the historical year to which they relate. So that you'll always know which year you used as your base year for the budgeting. Uh, and they're the key features of the new budgeting, uh, budgeting function within Dairybase. The benefit of this is it will enable you to leverage historical data that you've got uh, and utilize that for the pur purpose of budgeting. So when you start getting announcements about milk price and you start getting an understanding of what the feed prices are gonna be for the year ahead, this will enable you to make some quick changes to your historical data and see the impact that that's going to have on the, the cash position for the year ahead so that you can start planning um, for what's ahead. You'll see on the milk income screen that we have a link through to the Farmgate Milk Value Tool. So you can click on that link and it will actually take you through to the new tool that's being released by ADPF where it will enable you to put in information that's specific to your farm um, around the region, farm size, uh, the milk components, uh, the seasonality of supply, and have a look at what the weighted average milk price is for your region. If you've got any queries about dairy-based budgeting, please feel free to contact us or at dairy-based support at dairyaustralia.com dot au. Uh, thanks very much for listening today. I hope you enjoy the new budgeting feature within Dairy Guys.